You see all how this paint's peeling off of the aluminum? Everybody thinks that that's called electrolysis. And guess what? It's not. Electrolysis is what you do to your legs when you don't want hair to grow on them or your face when you don't want any hair there. This is called galvanic corrosion, not electrolysis. Welcome to today's Be A Better Boater segment with Bree Marine. We're gonna talk about anodes. Each boat has multiple different metals in it. Fiberglass boats, they have anodes, and aluminum boats. Aluminum boats are very important because they're all made of metal. Or fiberglass boats, they won't corrode through, but their outdrives and engines will have issues if you don't have it properly protected. Now how an anode works is, you have two different types of metals. Anytime you have a dissimilar metal, that metal will give off a electrical charge. We can get into the science of it, Go to, go to Wikipedia for that. However, it's always giving off a charge when you have two dissimilar metals. It's creating electricity. And so what we need is, when you have two metals, we need another, a third metal, to add into that circuit. And when you add that into the circuit, what it does is it creates a weak, or if, that's, if that is a weaker metal in that circuit, then that weaker metal will deteriorate prior to the other two metals, which is what your boat's made out of. And you don't want your boat deteriorating. So what we have is sacrificial anodes. And these anodes are designed to go through that circuit and to be the place that gets eaten up. Just for example here, this one right here, this is all aluminum. Well this is an anode, but this is this right here is probably made out of magnesium. And you can see this is all eaten up, that metal is, but this metal's fine. Okay? That's perfect. You want that to work or to do that because that's that's saving the boat from receiving that treatment right there. Outboard motors and inboard motors have it built right in. If you're in salt water a lot, you need to have additional anodes on the hull. Now if you're in fresh water most of the time and it's just during the day or for day use, trailer boating, well you can usually get away with simply the anode on the on the boat or on the on the outboard motor. This one's got an anode right here. This is called the trim tab. Believe it or not, not like trim tabs on there, but they refer to this as a trim tab, at least Yamaha does. Uh, uh, sometimes people call it a steering skeg. And then on the lower section of the motor right here, there's an arm bar, and that's connected as well. And what I want to show you something, for you guys that are like, okay Bobby, teach me something I actually need to know, I'm going to show you. This right here, this wire that goes from here to the anode, and then you have another one up here on this lower unit. This is a wire that goes to those sections to bring the electrical ground down to your anodes. If this were the case, if these didn't have a solid ground to the boat, or this is a fiberglass boat, or it didn't get its way back to the ground on the battery, then these anodes wouldn't activate, and that would then allow the corrosion to attack those metals we're trying to protect. So that's what those straps are for on here. And they're very important for the anode or for the corrosion resistance. Now on this boat, it's fiberglass boat. So if you were to put an anode on on this boat to protect any metals that are in the water, you have your through holes, bronzes, you have a few different ones. If you were to put an anode on this boat, then what you would need to do, because this fiberglass won't conduct electricity, so what you would need to do is mount the anode to the boat and then run a wire to a place where it's able to ground out so that that anode is grounded. Otherwise, it won't complete that electric circuit because metal is a conductor and it passes those ions through it to keep that in the circuit. So in order for it to destroy that prior to the tabs or something else, you need to have that. How big of an anode do you actually need? That's the question. The, tip, the traditional is 1% of the surface area that's touching the water. So aluminum boats are going to need a bit more and more surface area. So that's kind of the first starting point. But you can always tell the size that you need, a little smaller anode to a bigger one. You can always tell the size by the size of the boat and how big it is. So this one right here, you would want probably two of these in a 20 foot aluminum boat to get started. 
If you notice here, this says for salt and brackish water, and it's an aluminum anode. There's really three types of anodes. You have zinc, you have magnesium, and you have aluminum. Those are the three design types of anodes. The zinc is for, for fresh water. Magnesium is a little brackish, more, more fresh water still. And aluminum is designed specifically for salt water, as you can see here. So this particular anode right here is made out of aluminum. It's hooked to an aluminum boat. And it's loose. It's loose. How is that anode ever going to work? There's no way for the electrical current to flow through the aluminum back to the battery. Oh, here's a good example. This anode right here, you can see how pitted it is. This boat's been moored in the water, and this anode is really being eaten up. That's a good thing. You want your anodes to be fully effective. And if you also notice, this anode, even though it's white and chalky, that's from the salt water, it's not painted. See, this has bottom paint. This anode is not painted. If this anode had been painted, it would be insulated, and that circuit that needs to be created would not be created. It wouldn't conduct electricity, so you don't ever want to paint. That's why this boat's done properly, how the anode is separate from the bottom paint, and no paint on it, paint on the boat. Another thing, too, is on aluminum boats. A lot of you guys out there have aluminum boats. The bottom paint on there cannot be standard normal bottom paint. Um, if you're doing that, this bottom paint is designed so that when it's in the water, uh, barnacles and things won't grow on it. It's called anti-fouling paint as well. But this boat right here uh, has a special type of paint on it that doesn't have copper in it because boats do not like copper on it. Um, we've had times when people will use um, on the bunks, they'll use pressure treated bunks underneath the carpet. When pressure treated boards have copper in them and that reacts with the aluminum and it'll start eating holes right through the bottom of the boat. So make sure that you ha know what metals are on the products that you're putting on the boat. This one right here is specific for aluminum. Now for the final little bit, the amount of anode, whether it be aluminum, zinc, or magnesium, that you add to the boat, well, this electrical circuit that's flowing through this is going to put off an electrical charge, okay? And the types of metal are going to affect whether that charge is positive or negative. And a hundred years ago, Russian scientists did an experiment and found that fish react to the electrical charge in the water. Which, if you're a fisherman, the fact that you make a positive electrical current in the water and catch more fish is really cool. So if you take a multimeter, stick it in the water, hook the other negative to your battery lead to put the negative on there, it'll tell you how many volts. You want about 0.1 volt for bigger fish, and then you're gonna vary it a little bit more or less depending on what type of fish you're going. I think salmon are like 0.6 volts, I'm pretty sure is what it is. So if you're really bored and you really wanna catch a lot of fish and you just want that edge that nobody else has, anode your boat properly, you'll catch more fish. It's been proven. I'm pretty sure it's, it's science. So an electrical circuit, ions will flow from a positive to negative when any time you have two dissimilar metals. Okay? So this boat is made out of aluminum and also has stainless steel on it. So in this particular case, if you don't have something called a sacrificial anode, then the electrical current is going to eat your boat.